I thank you very much and appreciate this opportunity to share my humble opinion with the Gordon Institute for Business Science. Just over a week ago, the bank rating agency Moody's Investor Services downgraded the stability rating of South African banks from stable to negative. This downgrade took place in spite of overwhelming evidence that South Africa's banks avoided the global credit crisis because of regulatory mechanisms that prevented irresponsible lending and reckless investment in assets bundled to the U.S. subprime housing market that precipitated the current crisis. Moody's decision to revise our outlook downwardly from stable to negative <coughs> demonstrates the superficial way in which well-rating agencies tend to conduct their assessments and at most reveals a broader lack of consensus on what needs to be done to resolve the current world crisis. It is just three years since the world faced its first major recession since the Great Depression. This recession was unique in that, for the first time, the dominant paradigm of the Washington Consensus that a free market system could self-regulate and self-correct could no longer be sustained. As governments around the world scrambled to find resources to recapitalize their failing banks, it became increasingly clear that unregulated capitalist development and neoliberal approaches to world economics were not the panacea for protecting the world against insatiable self-interest and greed. In essence, the crisis exposed systemic failure in markets and the over-reliance on speculative boom and bust financial instruments within markets under the guise of rational expectations and self-regulation. It exposed the vicious cycle that the capitalist system was caught in, riding on boom wave in housing markets from the mid-90s, United States banks went beyond the real economy. They entered the realm of fiction by creating a wide range of financial instruments which were overexposed to toxic assets, packaging and bundling these as shares to be sold to unwitting investment banks such as Lehman Brothers. This eventually eroded global savings of many including the poor and pensioners' investments in the United States market. In such an environment of oversubscribed subprime lending and over-indebtedness, the markets failed to factor in the reality that lowering interest rates would not have significant e effects on demand. As it is now a matter of history, lowering of interest rates had no impact on improving demand. People lost their jobs and defaulted on their loans while the housing market became oversupplied and prices dropped. Our banks were less affected because of measures implemented against the threat posed by over-indebted consumers and unregulated financial markets. We implemented in South Africa the National Credit Act along with other consumer and financial sector regulations. We were therefore cushioned from being caught in the storm of failing financial markets. This does not, however, imply that South Africa was not adversely affected by the economic downturn which followed the financial crisis. South Africa was severely affected by the decline in, in international demand and a temporary withdrawal of investment funds. As a result of this and high levels of domestic indebtedness, we lost nearly a million jobs during 2009. It is in this context that the government took the bold decision to embark on government-driven investment in infrastructure and to use fiscal interventions to cushion the poor. The government placed job creation and the creation of sustainable livelihoods at the center of our recovery strategy. 
legal standards. We viewed the crisis as an opportunity to restructure the economy and to improve coordination and cooperation with business, civil society, and organized labor. In this way, we managed to work together with business and organized labor to ensure that companies did not retrench workers without clear plans for re-employment and reskilling. Some companies adopted measures such as temporary shutdown and short, term, short time during low demand periods of alternatives to wide, as alternatives to wide scale retrenchments. We took Close steps down. to improve the social wage by linking the public infrastructure investment program to a radically expanded public works and community work programs. Because we continued to improve social equity through the provision of adequate government services, ensuring universal access to basic services, health care and affordable transport, and providing access to affordable and quality education. I have taken the time to outline our approach and policy towards this ensuing crisis because the latest assessment of South Africa's outlook by Moody's reveals a lack of understanding of this approach. Indeed, Moody's downward revision was unexpected because it came shortly after we tabled uh, through the Minister of Finance a medium-term budget policy statement in which we reaffirmed our commitment to sound macroeconomic policies and our determination to stick to a sustainable fiscal path in the face of high levels of uncertainty directly arising from sovereign debt problems in Europe. The 2011 medium-term budget policy statement sets out its unequivocal response to the crisis by committing to maintain moderate real growth of around 2.3% in overall government expenditure so that the deficit would fall from the projected 5.5% of GDP to close to 3% by 2014-2015. Undertaking to cut spending on non-core items with a view to changing the composition of expenditure by allocating increasing amounts towards capital expenditure and investment in the productive capacity of our economy so that it can be more competitive and create more jobs. It is for these reasons that in our view, the fiscal framework contained in the mid-term budget policy statement adequately responds <coughs> to the current crisis and the specific challenges that we face domestically. We therefore respectfully disagree with Moody's statement and the interpretation drawn from the dynamic nature of our political environment. As you know, there is only one ANC in government. The policies that we pursue in government are the policies of the ANC. The ANC is fully behind the medium-term budget policy statement and the fiscal path contained in it. While there may be debate in the ANC, there is a high, dis high level of discipline in government and we have proven over time that we stick to our commitments. Of course, we must acknowledge that this is not always understood by the public, the media, and we now know rating agencies too. We expect everybody and the rating agencies to carefully consider the issues before making judgments which could influence investors negatively. It is in this context that we have welcomed the announcement by Walmart to invest in South Africa. Walmart has carried out an extensive assessment which gives us thumbs up as a prime destination for foreign direct investment. Walmart is willing to invest billions of dollars in new and permanent capacity in South Africa. What this means is that other companies can use this technical assessment to inform their investment decision in South Africa. Program Director, 
Ironically, the rating mechanism failed to forewarn the world about the potential of an ensuing Eurozone debt crisis, including the crisis in Greece, which has prompted the European Commission to call for the regulation of rating agencies themselves. <laughs> At closer scrutiny, the global economic system appears to have moved too far ahead of the capacity of its political system to engage with it effectively. Nowhere is this more obvious than in Europe today. The scale of the sovereign debt crisis in Europe is not matched by a political system with the capacity to support the contributions required by all European countries and the reforms required by many. The tensions between globalization and democracy in the unification of Europe have not sufficiently addressed the inherent contradiction between the sovereignty of states in a regional economic bloc. Some thinkers, such as Professor Danny Roderick, have gone to the extent of arguing that economic globalization cannot be pursued simultaneously with democracy and national determination. <laughs> 